life. It's the life as God has it. There is no death in that life. When you believe the gospel, you are obeying the gospel. By doing so, you are obeying God. Your obedience to the instruction in the meeting is what connects you to the flow of the spirit in the meeting. It's what connects you to the flow of the anointing in the meeting. Your prayer life is the temperature of your Christian life. Your faith must be in the law. The blood of Jesus is something the devil cannot stand. We give you praise this morning in the name of Jesus. We open our hearts to receive your word upon good ground. And everybody said a loud amen. amen. Before you take your seat, turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I want us to read together loud and clear. But when you have it, say, I have it. All right, let's read together, everybody. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. This morning, we're going to continue our teaching series, The Power of the Spirit. The power of the Spirit. Somebody say, I'm full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. By the way, ask the person that is saying that beside you, are you born again? Get an answer from them. Ask, ask them, are you born again? Because if you are not born again, you don't have this power we're talking about. It is the power of the Holy Ghost. So again, if you are born again, say boldly, say, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Shout your loudest, amen. amen. And you may be seated. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, we've said quite a number of things in this teaching thus far. And today we're going to take it a little further. All right. And you know, one thing I've been emphasizing is that the power of the Spirit has been given to us primarily for ministry. It has been given to us primarily for ministry notice he said ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and then he said because of this power you will become witnesses of me do you see that you become witnesses of me so the primary purpose of the power of the holy ghost is to do the work of ministry is to do the work of ministry if you are born again you should know if you didn't know before i'm telling you now if you are born again you have a ministry that has been committed to you by our lord jesus christ and that ministry is a message that ministry is a message is the message that is called the gospel the gospel of our lord you notice in second corinthians 5 17 18 and 19 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are be made new. Then he tells us in verse 18 that all these new things are of God, who had reconciled him, us unto himself and has given to us or committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. Did you see now? So he gave us a ministry in Christ. In other words, you cannot be in Christ and not be in ministry. All right? You cannot be in Christ and not be in ministry. You know, if you've been attending midweek services, we started two weeks ago, Apostolic Christianity. All right? And we've been talking about, you know, the real definition of Christianity. Christianity is not a butter and bread relationship. Even though God bought us our bread. But that is not the focal point of Christianity. In Christ, we have received a ministry. You see, in the new creation, you have rights and privileges, just as you also have obligations. There are many, you know, well-meaning believers who are only concerning themselves 
with their rights and privileges in Christ and they turn their back against the obligations they have in Christ. So you need to understand that we have a ministry, an obligation in the Lord Jesus Christ. We were not saved by works, but we have been saved to do good works. I explained this last Sunday. Part of the good works is the work of ministry, praying, fasting. Did you see that? Now, those things don't earn you God's love. Those things don't earn you God's approval. But men and women who are approved of God must do those things. Is somebody listen to what I'm saying this morning? Give me three hallelujahs the way you're looking now. Oh yeah. Glory to God. Make sure the person sitting next to you is adding more life to you and not taking the one you have. So tell your neighbor, say, if you are not really adding to me, I'm about to change my seat now. Uh-huh. So you got to understand that we have obligations in Christ. So I repeat it again. Everyone in Christ has also been put in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you cannot be in Christ and not be in the ministry. And that ministry is what this power that we're talking about is meant for. The power of the spirit is primarily for ministry. It is primarily for the ministry. Luke 24, 49. I sent upon you the promise of my father. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And he told them what they were to use that power for. He said in previous verses, verse 47, he said that repentance and remission of sins be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So we have an assignment to preach the gospel in all nations of the earth. You know, many times people wonder, you know, uh, you know, if you say we should preach the gospel in all nations of the earth, and then, you know, you see Christians saying, well, when I have the privilege to travel, I'll start preaching. No, you see, you start going by going to the next street, going to the next door. Being a missionary is not about traveling alone. Being a missionary particularly is about obeying the great commandment to go and preach. So you are a missionary when you preach to the person next door. You are a missionary when you preach to the people on the next street. You are a missionary when you preach in the bus that is carrying you to your house today. So being a missionary is not how far you travel. It is how well you obey. How well you obey the command to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus here is making it clear you cannot do this ministry without the power of the Holy Ghost. You mustn't preach without the power. The disciples have been with him three years and a half. And it's as though Jesus is warning them. Don't attempt ministry without Holy Ghost power. My Taibun said to you, don't attempt the Christian life without Holy Ghost power. As I'm going to show you this morning. That the life of the Christian, the believer, is powered up by the Holy Spirit. I'll say it again, the life of the Christian is powered up by the Holy Ghost. And this is why you see, like I've emphasized in the last two, three sessions of this teaching, this month, that you need to know that even though Christianity is a message, it is not mere talk. This message is not just mere words. The gospel I've told you is not some good history. No, the gospel is the power of God. I said the gospel is the power of God. In Matthew 22, 29, Jesus said, You err not knowing the scriptures, neither the power of God. And what he's saying to them there is the scriptures are the power of God. <laughs> Romans 1, 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth. Somebody say the gospel is the power. Talk like your voice is just Say the gospel is the power. Say no gospel. No power. 
Say it again. Say no gospel, no power. Say more gospel, more power. Shout amen, somebody. Please be seated. So you got to understand that. So Jesus is saying, do not attempt ministry without Holy Ghost power. We see Christians in our day, churches in our day, that are doing or attempting ministry without the Holy Ghost power. And they're practicing dead religion. Dead religion. And how do you know that? You go to a church where there are no signs, no wonders, no manifestations of the Holy Ghost, then the Holy Ghost is not there. It is impossible for the Holy Ghost to be present and not manifest himself. 1 Corinthians 12, 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit all. The King James said, with all. With all, he's not simply saying all, to profit everybody. In fact, that word, profit, in the original language, the Greek language, from where it is translated, actually means to make them better off. In other words, by virtue of his impact, you get better. In other words, where there are manifestations of the Holy Ghost, people get better. They get better spiritually, they get better emotionally, they get better physically. Because the Holy Ghost makes you better. He is a good spirit. He doesn't deplete people. Did you see? He builds people up. Are you seeing this now? So you understand, you cannot do ministry without his power. You cannot even do the Christian life without the power of the Holy Ghost. You're always going to fall to the flesh, fall to sin, when you don't allow the power of the Spirit in your life. Is someone listen to what I'm saying? I told you last week or two weeks ago, every time a believer yields to the flesh, he has just denied the power of God. I'll say it again. Every time a believer yields to the flesh, he has just denied the power of God. And the denial of the power of God does not invalidate the reality of the power of God it is just that for that person who has denied it he will never see it he will never experience it so you cannot attempt the Christian life without Holy Ghost power just as you cannot do ministry without the Holy Ghost power and we're going to see today in the lives of the Apostles even begin with our Lord Jesus Christ Luke 4 14 we see how they did ministry with Holy Ghost power. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Notice here, his fame is spreading. No billboards. No sponsored posts. Do you see this? No PR. But everybody is getting to know him. How did this happen? He already told us. He returned in the power of the Spirit. Where the power of the Spirit is present, everything is possible. Everything. Everything. I was sharing this with the, some of the leaders yesterday. And I was saying to them, in churches you will usually see politics. Politics is practically a reality of human communities. But people who play politics in ministry never go far. They usually actually get tormented by devils. And what do I mean by politics? For example, in the ministry of the Lord Jesus, both in local churches and in the body of Christ at large, you see Christians, you see ministers who try to scheme their way into places to platforms you know those people never go far you see because when you begin to scheme you will need to focus on scheming more to maintain what your scheming got you and as you do that you lose sight of the work of god in your life and then you begin to dry up but you must look at how our lord jesus came to the earth and fulfilled his ministry you need to understand that before he went to do the work of redemption on the cross, Jesus had an earthly ministry. And that is what you see chronicled in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
they are chronicles of the earthly ministry of jesus so he already showed us how ministry is done our lord himself never attempted ministry without holy ghost power he was baptized at the jordan river luke chapter 3 let's go look at it luke's gospel chapter 3 is somebody still here today and the bible says in verse 21 now when all the people were baptized it came to pass that jesus also being baptized and praying the heaven was opened and the holy ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him now it's good to read the bible very carefully and never read into the bible what the bible didn't say he didn't say a dove appeared there was no dove you see it's important that when you read your bible you see jesus and not things are you listening to what i'm saying i want us to read it again and read it very carefully all right he says now when all the people were baptized it came to pass that jesus also being baptized and praying the heaven was opened and the holy ghost descended who descended come on talk to me talk to me who descended come on be bold now come on be bold who descended i'm coming to you now who descended who descended did a dove descend so who descended the holy ghost can the holy ghost descend come on talk to me we just read it can the holy ghost descend that's what it means when we say the holy ghost came upon somebody and that descent of the holy spirit is what luke is describing go there now and then he says and the holy ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him like did you see that so was there a dove here talk to me somebody was there a dove here so the only reason a dove is mentioned is because the writer is trying to describe what happened did you see that now it's like me uh looking at somebody and um you know uh, you know uh, i was you know well sadly watched the match and you know and manchester united won the fa cup just so they don't go empty-handed <laughs> we're good neighbors manchester city and as that match was wrapping up i saw the guy they call wambi saka if you don't know football let him that is ignorant remain ignorant still but just trust the holy ghost for meaning and wambi saka you know and i was looking at him and his face looked like a pastor i know now if i were to describe that guy to somebody who doesn't follow football i would say that wambi saka is a good defender and he looks like pastor so and so now if i said that to you have i said that pastor played that match yesterday no i have only mentioned that pastor just for the sake of illustration he wasn't there and you see what i'm talking about and so you see in the same way luke is saying that the spirit descended in a bodily shape like a dove he didn't say a dove showed up stop looking for birds you know this is one of the reasons why a lot of christians miss the things of the spirit because of the wrong understanding so tell three persons again there was no dove at the jordan river say like you mean it say, tell them very well say there was no dove there hallelujah please be seated so you understand it was the spirit that descended upon the lord jesus christ in a bodily shape like a dove like a dove and you see what god wants us to pay attention to the most is not even all the theatrics of how he descended as much as the fact that he actually came upon him and the resultant effects of the spirit upon the lord jesus christ so you see he says and a voice came from heaven which said thou art my beloved son in whom i am well pleased now this tells you clearly god gives his spirit to sons now, that doesn't mean uh ladies are counted out sons there means offspring it's children the spirit is given to sons of god 
because the spirit is given to those who believe you become a son when you believe john 1 12 you see that as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of god even unto those who believe on his name so you understand when the person believes it becomes a child of god and when you believe the holy ghost is given to you john 7 verse 37 38 and 39 jesus stood on the last day of the feast cried with a loud voice and said if any man thirst let him come and drink he said he that believeth as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water verse 39 he said this spake he of the holy ghost which those who believe should receive so the holy ghost is for those who believe look at that this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive so the simple way of qualification for receiving the holy ghost is to believe believe in jesus believe he's the son of god believe he died for your sins believe he was buried believe on the third day he rose again and then he ascended to the right hand of god where he ever liveth when you believe that you become a son of god you don't need to write an application only believe only believe and once you believe you become exactly what jesus is a son and god gives you the holy ghost just like he gave jesus the holy ghost that's how it works isn't that simple it was after this that jesus began ministry before then he, he didn't do ministry now forget about some funny folks who brings some extra biblical in quote revelation and they say that there were works of jesus that he did as he was growing up that's nonsense he never did those things so we say you know jesus was performing miracles even as a little boy that's a lie jesus did no miracle until the holy ghost came upon him because you cannot do no miracle of god without the holy ghost power you cannot so I said, well, he's the son of God. He's Jesus. He's God. You mean he was limited? He had to wait for the Holy Ghost to come? Yes, he had to wait for the Holy Ghost to come upon him. Don't forget, even though he's God, Philippians 2 from verse 5, let this mind, open your Bible, be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who though was in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal to God or with God, but made himself of no reputation. Philippians 2, and, be, and he says, and took upon him the form of a servant. That's the Lord he's talking about. And was made, notice and pay attention, and was made in the likeness of men. He was made in the likeness of men. When you read in Galatians chapter 4, put one hand in Philippians and let's run quickly to Galatians. It's right there in your Bible. If you don't know how to find Galatians 4, it is just right after Galatians 3. I thought I would help you. In Galatians 4 and verse 4, he says, When the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman. You see, these scriptures we're looking at, we're looking at the facts of scripture that talks about the incarnation of Christ. That he is a man god became a man are you seeing this now i read it again but when the fullness of the time was come god sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law now, by the way uh just side journey here now this statement is what defines the things paul had said in verse one two and three in this chapter now i say verse one that the heir as long as he is a child differed nothing from his servant though he be lord of all but is under tutors and governors unto the time appointed of the father even so we when we were children were in bondage under the elements of the world so now i've seen people you know try to explain this and it's very wrong explanation galatians 4 1 3 and he says uh you know in christ you are a son first i mean a servant then you have to grow spiritual maturity he's not talking about spiritual maturity here that you know when you are spiritually immature you are a servant then when you mature you become a son Come on now. Tell them, but say, come off it. That's not what he's saying. We already saw that the moment you believe you are a son of God. But of course you grow. But this is not talking about spiritual growth. You, you are a son, not a servant. But you are a son who serves. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now, what Paul is saying in Galatians 4, 1 to 3, he's talking about the dispensation under the law and then as against being under grace in Christ Jesus. 
under the law, men were servants. The law was a tutor. If you read chapter 3, did you see that? You see already mentioned, mentions that clearly. The law was our tutor. Are you listening to this? And that hour actually is not really you and me. It's the Israelites because you were not given the law. Is somebody listening to me? That's why he said in Galatians 3 and verse 13, he said, Christ has redeemed us. The man talking is a Jew. That's Paul himself. Christ has redeemed us. Us who? Jews. From the curse of the law. Did you see that now? Being made a curse for us who were under the law. For it is written. Did you see? Cursed is he that hanged on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. Paul is not a Gentile. He already classifies himself as a Jew. They are separate from the Gentiles. Are you seeing that now? So the law was a taskmaster, a tutor to lead them to Christ. So in Galatians 4, 1 to 3, he's saying the heir as long as he's a servant is not different from what? I mean a child rather, he's not different from a servant. So what he's saying there is, hey, he's not talking spiritual maturity. He's a child, that means he doesn't have comprehension. And that was what they were under the law. That's why the law is for those who are transgressors. The law is not for righteous men. Yes, yes, yes. If somebody listen to me, it's not for righteous men. You read that also in the book of Galatians. So don't, don't ever come to Galatians 4 and say, you know, you know, when you are a child, uh-huh, you are in bondage. No, you are not in bondage. He has sent the spirit of his son into your heart that can cry, Abba, Father. That is the freest any man can be. To look at God and say, you are my father. There is no freedom more than that. Is someone listening to what I'm saying? And then he goes on in verse 5 and says, but when the fullness of time. So notice the fullness of time is not about you growing up. The fullness of time he's talking about is when Jesus came. Are you listening to that now? But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent for his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. Did you see that? That we might receive the adoption of sons. Glory to God. So he's not talking about the sonship you grow into here. He's talking about the adoption of sons in redemption, the redemptive work of Christ. Did you get it? Did you get it? In case you preached that error before, don't preach it again. Okay? I'm a son of God. Are you bold to say it? Say, I'm a son of God. Say louder. Say, I'm a son of God. If I tell five persons, say, I'm a son of God, I'm a son of God. Say, better believe it, better believe it. I am a son of God. All right, so go back to Philippians. I said, put one hand there. Be seated, please. Philippians 2, that's where we were. And we were in verse 7. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, make it, made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. So Jesus is God who became man. So all the while he walked the face of the earth, what was he? A man. All right? And he had to wait for the spirit of God to come upon him to function supernaturally. For example, when he was a little child in Luke 2, he wasn't teaching the, the doctors and the Pharisees. He was actually asking them questions. And that in itself is to let you know he had to learn scriptures. Luke's gospel chapter 4 tells us in verse 14, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue, did you see? And then he stood up, verse 16, stood up for to read. And it was handed over to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. So notice he said he had a custom of going to the synagogue. Usually when they went to the synagogues from the Old Testament time, did you see what they would do is they would read. Nehemiah 8, 8 tells us that. They read from the book of the law of Moses. And they made the people to understand it. So what they do is, usually when they go to the synagogues on the Sabbath day, they will read the law, and then the rabbi will come up and explain the reading to the people. So that the people can get the sense of what is there. So he says, Jesus had a custom of going to the synagogue. Why was he doing that? He wasn't going there to just mock them that let me see whether they know it see you know i'm god 
I wrote the scripture. So, yeah, let's see what the rapper will explain today. So, he wasn't going there to say, ah, ah, see this nonsense, this is what he's saying. Don't worry, when my time fully comes, I will show you that I know this thing more than you. No, he was actually there to what? To learn like everybody else. Are you listening to this now? Because he was a man. He had to wait for the Holy Ghost. For him to start anything ministry. The Holy Ghost had to come upon him. He wasn't pretending. And he did that to show us the example. You cannot do ministry without the power of the Holy Ghost. And he did that to also show us. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, everything changes. What that tells you is that there were people who saw him come into that place on Sabbath days, all these years. But when he came there after the Holy Ghost had come upon him, something changed. And that's why we, said, we saw it in Luke 4. He got there this time, and after he had read, he said to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. What scripture? The spirit of the Lord God is come upon is upon me. Did you see? He has anointed me to preach. Saying so, you know what I was saying to them, He has really anointed me now, and now I can preach. <laughs> and now I can preach. They always read it, but on this day, something had changed. There was already a fulfillment. The spirit had come upon him. The spirit had anointed him. Now he could do ministry. Now he could preach with power. Now miracles would happen through his hands. He wasn't pretending. It was a fact. And he was showing us the example. This is how ministry is done. With the Holy Ghost power. What that tells you is that if the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you can also preach with power. Hey, somebody listen to what I'm saying? And when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you can preach with power, with signs and wonders following your messages. Whether it's in the bus, one-on-one, -on -one, in a service, when the Holy Ghost is upon you, you can also preach with power. I preach with power all the time, even right now. Glory to God. Because the Spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me. I am anointed. Glory to God. Woo! You don't have to feel like it. You just have to know it. Because what God says is true whether or not you feel like it. Yes. Say boldly, I am anointed. I am. Woo! Tell three persons, I am anointed. <laughs> Woo! Be seated. Glory to God. He saw the joy to be anointed. <laughs> It's a good thing to be anointed, I'm telling you. The anointing makes a difference. It makes difficult things easy. Uh-huh. I was a little boy. The first time I ever stood on stage was to, you know, uh, broadcast news on a children's day. My family church. I was so scared that I began to see something else different from the paper in front of me. The paper is already there. I said, just read what is in the paper. I began to see something else. And I began to read nonsense. That was how frightened I was to be on stage. Who would ever think that that little boy would be preaching like this now? <laughs> what is the difference? The power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the anointed. So he said, Pastor said, I don't know if I can ever fulfill the call of God. How can I preach? Me that I'm very shy. Live shy alone. Embrace Holy Ghost power. <laughs> when it comes upon you, it makes what was hard easy. It toughens you up. My God. It makes you bold. Peter was a coward. But when the Holy Ghost came upon Peter, he became another man. He became a different man entirely. The same guy who was denying Jesus stood up in front of everybody. In Acts 2, 14, Peter stood with the 11. Did you see? And he said, these men are not drunken as ye suppose. Seeing, but this is the third hour of the day. He said, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And that's how you notice, just like with Jesus, when the Holy Ghost came upon Peter also, the first thing he did was to preach. Because again, the primary purpose of the Spirit's power is ministry. 
is ministry. I repeat it, the primary purpose of the Spirit's power is ministry. Is to do the work of ministry. To preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. When that anointing comes upon you, it cancels out your limitations. It makes your limitations inconsequential. Are you getting what I'm saying, somebody? When the anointing comes upon a man who stutters, you'll be amazed that when the anointing comes upon him, you'll be speaking plainly. <laughs> Woo! It makes a man bold. My God. It's power. Power is real, sir. Hey, I said power is real. <laughs> Please be seated. You know, one time, I went to preach at the minister's conference somewhere in the Niger Delta. And the previous speaker, before I came up, began to say how he went to some places where he saw people literally trying to stage manage miracles. And that uh, this particular place, you know, they had some naked wires that they are placed under their carpet. We don't have any here, don't worry. And that uh, when the pastor wanted to stage manage that, you know, you could flow in the power of the Holy Spirit to make people fall down under the power, he would make people come to the altar. And they had one guy with the switch. So once they say, Rishi, the guy will just put on the, this thing and it will shock people. And people will fall down. You know, he so prepared my body by the time I came up to minister. And, and sincerely, I, I looked at the ministers in that meeting and I said, can you imagine what people have made the gospel become in this generation? I said, see, if you were not brought up where I was brought up, you probably may not feel pained by that. I was brought up in a place where power demonstration was a normal thing. At least you know what I'm saying. And I'm like, why do you have to go that route? Just learn it. Just learn it. Just learn it. Because the truth is, it is actually a reality that the power of the Holy Ghost can touch your body and it will be as if they electrocuted you. Oh yes, I've seen that in my ministry. I've laid on some people, they are shaking as if I voted while I entered their body. So when I see somebody going through all that while and naked, what even if he shock you yourself? You didn't even see the risk to his life for something God is giving for free. <laughs> when it comes upon you, you don't have to even be the senior pastor. You can be raising a song and the power of God fills everywhere. The one day in Ife, we went to Christ Tribe, our campus ministry. And I was going to preach. And I asked Toby to sing before I came up. And as she was singing, people were being slain by the power of the Holy Ghost. So that you will know that it is not something that only works. It's what I'm talking about. It's the power of God came upon her. It's not something that only works when we are preaching. Are you listening to me? It is for all believers. All believers. All believers. Every believer. The power of God is more real than electricity. <laughs> in fact, I love the way a man of God called it. He said, electricity is God's power in the physical. <laughs> and it is substandard to the real raw power of God. Because the power of God moves without you even being able to trace it. But it will get to where it is going. And it will change what has to be changed. In the middle of the night this morning, I was praying in the Holy Ghost. And mom joined me. We kept on praying together. And I prayed to some point. And somebody's name came up in my spirit. I'm sure he's watching now. He's in the US. And I sent him a message around 4 a.m. I said, call me now. But he didn't wake up at that time. It's not a problem. I prayed for you already. And as I began to pray for him, mom and I, I heard the Lord say, it's not just him. And we prayed this prayer. And so I want to let you know, I prayed this prayer for you. Whatever is your next step yes. whatever is supposed to be your next level is already open to you yeah. hey i said it is already open to you now i said it is already open to you now you know there are prayers that we will call you and be praying for you but there are prayers that like apostle paul it is after we have prayed it we will not be telling you that's why all those polite prayers were reports of prayers prayed he said, I cease not to pray. So he's telling them, these are the things I prayed for you. And I'm telling you, these are the things I prayed for you as the Lord quickened me. And 
I heard openings, openings, openings. <laughs> openings, openings. Some of you, you are going to experience it particularly in your career. There will be openings for you, openings for you. Hey, I say openings for you. Openings for you. Openings for you now. That is what the power of God does. We pray the prayer in a physical location, but the power transcends that location. It goes everywhere. Because when you get to work this week, you will see what the power of God has done. Hey, I say you will see what the power has done. Thank God for it now, everybody. Give him thanks now. Come on. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Hey, thank the Lord for it. Thank him for openings. Thank him for openings. Thank him for openings. Glory. Thank him for openings. Thank him for openings. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Be seated. Glory to God. That was just an example. Because you see, without that power of the Spirit, nothing works in Christianity. Nothing. And I mean nothing. That power is responsible for everything that works in Christianity. That power is responsible. Whether the healing of the sick, raising of the dead, breakthroughs in people's lives, and most importantly, the salvation of the person's soul. That power is responsible. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 2, I determined to know nothing else amongst you except Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and trembling. And he said, my speech... And my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. And all the way the Amplified Translation puts it, he said, the spirit of God was walking all the while in my listeners, stirring up in them the most holy emotions, thereby persuading them. You know what he says? When the preaching of the word is done, there is the power of the Holy Ghost persuading the hearer. In Acts 16, the Bible tells us when they went to Lystra, they met with a woman called Lydia, whose heart the Lord opened, and she gave heed to the words that Paul preached. That's the power. It compels people to listen. It compels people to listen. Holy Ghost power compels people to listen to the message of the gospel. In Luke 5, 17, after Jesus had been baptized with this spirit, this power, and anointed with this power, he was preaching in the place, Luke 5, 17, the power of God was present to heal. Was present to heal. Everything changed when the anointing of the Holy Ghost came upon him. And that is the same for the believer today. The presence of the Spirit upon you and within you changes your life. Yes. Stop walking around the earth as though you are ordinary. You are not ordinary, yes. my friend. The spirit of the mighty God lives inside of you. How dare you still think of yourself as ordinary? You are not ordinary. When the challenges of life come against you, always remember there is power inside of you. Power changes things. Power moves things around. <laughs> your body is acting funny. Let the power go to work on your body. You need to learn to take the spirit upon Sorry, the spirit within and put it upon. <laughs> you take the spirit within and put him upon you. What does it mean to put the spirit within upon? It's utterance. Utterance is usually what is implied. Whenever you see, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, the next thing you will hear is he said something. So whenever you open your mouth to speak God's word, you are taking what is inside and putting it upon yourself. That is how to stir yourself up against the works of the devil. Hey, somebody listen to what I'm saying today. The power is there. It is given gratuitously to all sons of God. You didn't earn it. God gave you as a gift. In other words, God looks at his family. He says, I don't want to see anyone powerless amongst them. 
So the moment the person is a son of God, God says, take power. Take power. Enjoy power. Use power. Preach with power. Live by power. Move with power. Talk with power. <laughs> That's what I told you last week. We don't pray to get the power. It's given to us as a gift. What prayer does is to put that power to work. Beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. One translation in the original says, you charge yourself red hot like a battery. Red hot. You have the phone already, but it can be low on battery power. Depending on whether you charge it or you don't charge it. You charge it. I told you last week about uranium-235. Do you remember? When it is enriched sufficiently, it can become a weapon-grade element that will explode and destroy an entire city in one picosecond. A picosecond is one trillionth of a second. Faster than you can blink. That's how the Holy Ghost power inside you is. You enrich it. And I told you, you enrich it with those spiritual activities. Praying in tongues. Speaking God's word. Acting on God's word. You see, every time you act on the word, God takes responsibility for your result. I said again, every time you act on the word of God, God takes responsibility for your result. So whenever you are acting on God's word, stop bothering about what will come out of it. Leave that to God. Obey God and leave the consequences to him. Every time you act on the word of God, God personally takes responsibility for your result. Personally. Yours is to make sure you've done what the word says. And every time we do that, the power of God shows up. Because the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. <laughs> Somebody say, I'm full of power. I'm full of power. Sit down, sit down, sit down. So we see it in the ministry of the Lord Jesus. He never did ministry without the power of the Holy Ghost. So everything we see in his ministry is by this same power. It's not a mystery. It's an aberration for us today to say we are teaching a series and the title is The Mystery of the Ministry of Jesus. Sir, that's wrong. No mystery about it. It's clear. We know the result. We know what caused the results. Acts 10 38 in the house of Cornelius, Peter stood up there and said, He said in Acts 10 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I love how he qualifies it. He said, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is like me saying Timothy of Ikeja. He deliberately used those words for them to know he was just the ordinary guy you people saw as a carpenter. But when God anointed him, he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devils because God was with him. <laughs> so they look at him and say, he's the same Jesus of Nazareth. But the results are different because there is something on him now. Something on him now. Something on him now. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. That's the same way they should begin to speak about you. How God anointed Fumi of Ogba. How God anointed. Put your name there. Come on, put your name there. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. How God anointed you with the Holy Ghost and with power. And you go about doing good. Healing all that were oppressed. You cannot be anointed and yet you are doing bad in life. You cannot be anointed with Holy Ghost power and generational causes continue to afflict you. Not you, sir. You know, my father in law said, when he, was, when he was still younger in the ministry and was a missionary ministry that I was running, and they went to one place for crusade and a demonized woman just met him and he, he went to the woman and said, Why don't you join us for our crusade? And the woman said in Yoruba, ah, ah, ni reshu. And he said, he responded to her and said, e, e she, me, me man she, <laughs> He said, the devil can't do me, I do devil. And that night, he said, as they went to sleep after their crusade, he said, the Lord woke him up in the middle of the night and said, that woman you spoke to is not an ordinary person. And the Lord said to him to begin to pray in the spirit. Apparently, that woman felt insulted by what he said to her. 
and she went and did some funny things. Long story short, the following morning, listen, this was his early days of ministry. He was not a general overseer, he was not a big man of God, a believer. The following morning, they carried that woman out of that village, half dead. Whatever she tried to do against him, God's power smote her. Because God backed up that assertion. Devil, don't do me. I do devil. Because he said, in my name, you, in my name, you will cast out the devil. Not the devil driving you out of town. I told you last Sunday, we don't run away from the devil. We run him out of town. Yes, 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 yes. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That is the way it must be said of you too, like Jesus. How God anointed Peter of Lagos. <laughs> Put your name there. What's, what's your name? Where are you from? <laughs> be seated. Be seated. It makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So Peter makes it clear there is no mystery behind it. The reason Jesus did all these things was because the Holy Ghost came upon him. Did you see that? He did ministry with the power of the Holy Spirit. What about the apostles? Acts 4, 33. The Bible says, and with great power, the apostles gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. In fact, if you back up to Acts 2, 43, did you see that now? The Bible says God wrought signs and wonders through the apostles. It characterized their lives. They never did ministry without power. And when the power is present, there will be results. Yes. <laughs> there will be results. In Acts 5.12, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Of course, we read further down verse 15, 16, 17. Speaks of how that the shadow of Peter began to heal the sick. He became that strong. Now, some other time, maybe next week, I'm going to explain that. That is the effect of enriching yourself in power. Notice it began with from their hands. Then it got to the point where his shadow being cast upon the sea caused healing to happen to them. You see the same with Apostle Paul, Acts 19.11. God wrought special miracles. Did you see? Through the hands of Paul. So that handkerchiefs or aprons were taken from his body, placed upon those who were sick, they got healed. Those who were oppressed with devils were delivered from those oppressions. Did you see that? It's, you see, it's like you are enriching it to the point where the force field of that anointing is growing. It's growing. It's growing. It's growing. Did you see that? Over the years, I've seen that kind of progression. Early days of ministry, I lay hands, lay hands, lay hands. There's nothing wrong with lay hands. And I've come to a point in ministry, a few years ago started happening. Now, I'm not saying you should go rush my seat. But a lady sat on my seat after a service. This was 2021. Did you see? She had a lump in her breast. She, it was God honoring her faith. And she went to the chair, sat on it, believing that that thing will dematerialize. And it did. Hallelujah. I didn't have to know. Are you listening to me? Because you see, when you carry God's power, crevices of the impact of that power can be physically left behind. In the places you've been to. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Jesus didn't have an agreement with the woman that was cured from the issue of blood. It was her faith. What Jesus did in all that was Jesus constantly lived with a consciousness of power. Are you listening to what I'm saying? As you enrich yourself in the things of the spirit, the force field, as it were, begins to expand 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 the time should come in your walk with god where you're so conscious of the things of the spirit that you can take handkerchiefs from yourself and send it to somebody and they will receive healing there because every sign and wonder done in christ before believers is an example not a surprise it shows you what is possible to you too what god wants for you too these signs shall follow them that believe. Mark 16, 15, 17. In my name, 
they shall he didn't say just a few of them he said they meaning all of them these signs shall follow them that believe means this is how you will know those who believe this is how to identify them you know i was when you want to tell whether a person is a believer one of the things that will happen is you will see him according to all the things jesus said mark 16 17 18 and 19 you'll see him cast out devils you'll speak with new tongues did you see if he takes up any deadly thing he shall not harm him so in case for example you ate something poisonous now not that you did it purposely did you see you heard it without knowing the next reaction shouldn't be fear aha hey expecting for when your stomach will now begin to you now have him start having cramps and then fever and then admission that should not be your expectation he said if you take up any deadly thing it shall not harm you so if you drank or ate something unknowingly that is poisonous the next thing to do is to stand on this word father i thank you because i'm a believer i'm not a doubter i believe in jesus as my lord and my savior and now i've eaten i've drunk something unknowingly that is poisonous and glory to god because you said in your word it shall by no means hurt me i thank you right now because this thing is neutralized in the name of jesus christ and you go about your life oh, yes. he says is that possible he happened to paul on the island of melitos a viper that snake actually beat him the people were expecting him to drop dead but the word of god went to work he yes. shall by no means harm and rather than fall dead paul kept on doing what he was doing the people were so shocked like that man <laughs> you're a god <laughs> you are a god why because that is what the bible says how come now you drink expired yogurt and the whole street is is, is not going to have peace again he said ah they they finally got me no they didn't get you sir you have finally found yourself in a situation to act on god's word Are you listening to what i'm saying that it is possible as a believer you went to a canteen to eat like everybody else and on that day they served expired you know spoiled stale stew and everybody in your office that ate from there they are going to toilet as if they are going to to do vacation keep going in and out as they are stooling they are vomiting but you you even ate the most and they are saying, oh God, are we? Ah, we are stooling. Why you not go stool? <laughs> Say, no, the Lord, the earth is his footstool. I can't stool. <laughs> <laughs> you listen to what I'm saying? Because that is what the word of God says. Why will it not affect the believer? Because there is a power in him to neutralize the effect of that. Thing. Yeah. Oh, say it again. Say, I'm full of power. <laughs> be seated, be seated. These are things to expect. Yes, Stephen, Acts 6 8, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Verse 9 to 10. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. But notice the Bible says, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake why because he is speaking with power same thing you see about jesus in mark 6 verse 4. people look at him and say and said what wisdom is this given to him that such mighty works are done by him did you see this now and you see because the people couldn't believe it. why is he how come he's doing these kinds of things those words were not mere words those words were words, words of power the same with Stephen. Did you see in Acts 6? You also see Philip in Acts 8. Acts 8, verse 4 to 8. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto, the, unto those things which Philip spake. Hearing and seeing. Look at that. Hearing and and seeing the miracles which he did and what did they see verse 7 for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies 
and that were lame were healed. You see, the, 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 the lame being healed and those with palsies. Palsies could mean anything. It could be cerebral palsy. Did you see that? It could also be physical palsies. But it says many with palsies were healed. One power, many solutions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you seeing that? That is why that word, the word power, usually in the Greek, most places in the New Testament, is the word dunamis. And it talks about power that is dynamic. Did you see that? In his working, it's, it's the miracle itself. So it means it can manifest itself in any given situation. But one thing is certain. When that power goes to work, you will always see a miracle. In other words, the results will not be normal. That's what it means. Are you getting this, somebody? We saw it in the ministry of Philip. We saw it in the ministry of Peter, as I mentioned earlier on. In another case with Peter, Acts 9... The Bible says in verse 32 to 35, and it came to pass as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints who dwelt at Lida. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years. In other words, this was a sickness of eight years. And the Bible says, Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ, in fact, I skip some part, let me read it. He said, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. Now, he means the guy's crippled now. And Peter said unto him, and he has, Jesus Christ, make it thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelt at Leda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Same thing that happened in Samaria in the ministry of Philip. Is happening here also in the ministry of Apostle Peter. Now, Peter is what you could classify as a senior minister. Philip was what you could classify as a junior minister. Did you see that now? But you notice both the senior minister and the junior minister or younger minister are flowing in the same manifestations. Because the promise is unto all. Somebody said, I can do miracles. You're not sounding convincing. Say, I can do miracles. If I say, I do miracles. Regularly. Say, it's my thing. Oh, yeah. Say it again. Say, it's my thing. It's my thing. So, miracles shouldn't be something that you are so, you know, carried away by when you hear other people doing it. It should be something you consider as your thing. I do miracles. I heal the sick. I raise the dead. Say it like you mean it. Say, I heal the sick. I raise the dead. Say it's normal. Uh huh. Say normal, normal. Uh huh. So, when are you going to do miracles now? Today? Are you going to do miracles today? Would you pray for somebody when you find somebody who needs healing today? You know, I told you this many times. You know, the believers are to go out in the world to do all those things mark 16 17 jesus said look for those who need devils cast out of them you shouldn't really be expecting to cast out devils from people in the church a believer is not supposed to be possessed i listen to what i'm saying now so where will you find people to cast devils from go outside there i've told you praying for the sick did you see lay hands on the sick according to mark 16 18 and 19 you see for the believer is out there now, if believers in the church are sick, he tells them, help him. Be alert, Usher. Tell, you know, he tells them what to do. I'm just talking. Do you see now? He tells them what to do. If believers are sick, James 5 and verse 15, he said, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. You know, the problem with many Christians is they are looking for sick people in the church to pray for. That's not your job. The sick in the church is the responsibility of the leadership. The sick that you will pray for are outside there. And they are the ones you will meet in the cause of preaching the gospel. And I tell you, many are sick out there. Oh. Yes. I was speaking to one guy in Glasgow. The guy said he believes in the future. That's what he does, his belief. His faith is in the future. You know, the way we put our faith in Jesus. He said, Me, I believe in the future. Ah. I said, Who is future? Where is he? Is I believe in the future. Say so you know you're sick. <laughs> you 
You know, this is what I'm saying. You go out there. You know, I was preaching to a man, and the man told me he, had, he has a son. Oh boy, I felt compassion for him. I, I wish I met his son, but you know, you know, he was just telling me about his son. And he told me, he said, his son was born with cerebral palsy. This man had a very, if I think I recorded my conversation at the end of the conversation, because I said I was going to use that video to talk to men. Yeah, I recorded it, I have it on my phone. And this man had a very well paying job. And he told me, he said, he resigned his job to pick up Uber so that he can have time to take care of his son. And he's a Christian. In fact, he's an Iranian he's from Iran. First, in fact, that's the only Iranian person I've met in my life who's a believer. If I told me, he said, they fled from Iran to the UK because of persecution. And he told me, he said, you cannot say you believe in Jesus that they will kill you. I mean, the entire country. Iran, you say you have received Jesus, you are dead. So the, the idea is once you get born again in Iran, start running. Just like the name is Iran. At least what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so Iran is a country where the moment you receive Jesus start running for your life and he told me he said, that's why they came to England himself and his wife they had a, a child and all that but in my conversations with him you know and you know the way whites are it's, it's amazing the work the devil has done in their lives is that even those who are so called Christians they consider it insulting when you try to convince them yeah that they don't want you to tamper with their belief. And I'm asking this man, and I say, Jesus wants to heal your son. I said, Jesus is going to heal your son. And every time I kept talking, I just kept, you know, I know, I know, you know, you know, you know, you know we're just taking care of him. I'm like, no. You're taking care of him. You don't have a life anymore. Jesus wants you to live your own life. And he wants to heal that boy. You know, you know, you know, you know. And there was another Muslim we preached to. Mom and I were driving together in an Uber. And I preached to this guy. And he's telling me all the problems. His wife has cancer. He's, I mean, they have sickness problems in their family. And I said, we can pray for you. If you see the hastiness with which this guy dropped us when we got to. As he came down, he said, no, 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 don't worry. I said, give us He said, quick, before I knew what has come down into the trunk, carry our things out. And say, said, thank you, thank you, thank you. I said, ah doesn't want the prayer doesn't want it but i offered it because that is where the sick that jesus is talking about are waiting for you out there on the fields out there on the fields people are sick what does it say will happen when you lay hands on them they shall recover they shall he didn't say they might they shall recover what does that tell you don't hesitate to do it the moment that fellow told me this i said i can pray for them i didn't think twice i can pray for them he just rejected it but i didn't hesitate because i told you earlier on whenever you act on god's word who takes responsibility for your results god 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 he expects to see you pray for people on the streets what we should start seeing now in the city of Lagos, and for everyone watching different parts of the world where you are, what we should start seeing where you live now is you holding hands with people on the streets. And people say, what are you doing? Say, I'm praying for him to be healed now. I'm praying for the sickness to vanish. I'm praying for the legs to be healed. I'm praying for the bones to receive healing. That's what the apostles did. Acts 3, and the gate called beautiful. Acts 3, 6, Peter said it with boldness to the guy there. Silver or gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. When they asked them, how did you do it? In verse 16, Peter said, he said why are you looking at us as though by our own holiness or power we made this man heal? He said, it's the faith, the name of Jesus and faith in his name had made this man strong. What happened there? Peter is still explaining to them. When we acted on the word, God took responsibility. God is waiting to take responsibility. You must do the acting. Yes, sir. Charles Cap said, the word of God is not void of power. It is God's people who are void of action. Act on the word. Act like it's true. Because it is. I said it is. I said the word works. 
Finally, stand, stand to your feet. Remain standing. We're closing now. The demonstration of God's power stirs up reactions. In Acts 14, verse 11 to 12, and when the people saw what Paul had done, now this was when Paul had ministered God's healing power to that man who was impotent at Lystra. Great miracle. Till today, it is one of the texts in scriptures that when I read it, it stirs my spirit up. The man at Lystra, Acts 14, 7, there they preached the gospel. And in verse 8, there sat a man there at Lystra, imported from his mother's womb, who never had walked. Same heard Paul preach. And Paul fastened his eyes on him, perceiving he had faith to be healed. Said with a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. And the man leaped and walked. Next thing you will see was a reaction. Verse 11, Acts 14. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of like Lycaonia, the gods had come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas, Jupiter, and Paul, did you see this? Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Look at that reaction. People began to treat them as though they were what? Gods. Because it is the power of the Spirit of God. In Acts 19, another reaction. Sometimes it's negative. Did you see this now? And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Let's keep all that. One thing I wanted to take home today particularly is that we resist temptation by the Spirit's power. We resist temptation by the Spirit's power. In Psalm 32, 6, we know that no temptation, test, or trial has the capacity to overwhelm the reborn spirit. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. It's a little blind to us in King James. Let's read it in the Amplified. For this forgiveness, let everyone who is godly pray. Pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely, when the great waters of trial overflow, they shall not reach the spirit in him. Meaning, no matter how difficult life gets it is not capable of overwhelming your reborn spirit what is happening to many christians in this generation is learned helplessness so you see a person saying i can't take it that's a lie that's a lie it's too much that's a lie ah this thing is going to kill me that's a lie he said it will not reach the spirit in him why that spirit is fortified and it is capable of rising against the devil first corinthians 10 13 there are no temptation taking you but such as is common to man but god is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it the way of escape out of every temptation is the power of the spirit of god is the work of the spirit now the word temptation test and trial are interchangeably used in scripture so it could be temptation to sin it could be a temptation that is a trial hardship things are tough by the power of the spirit you overcome them second corinthians 4 7 to 9 but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of god and not of us we are troubled on every side yet not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed put it up in the um, in the message bible quickly message bible and as i was reading that now the holy ghost stirred this up in my spirit if you have been dealing with a stubborn obstacle you can actually push it and knock it down by the power of the holy ghost i'll say it again if you have been battling like an obstacle you know you're trying to push but it's like rather than the thing moving from you it is caving in on you but this is what the lord says you can actually knock down that wall by the power of the holy spirit and we're going to do it now we're going to pray a three minutes prayer that can change a lot of things 
now if you if you have experienced what i just described come to the altar come quickly you're experiencing it just come it's like you know i told you on wednesday in the spirit knowing is seen i just saw that pushing we're already eating into second service so double up double up pushing we're going to pray and this is the word of the lord to you second samuel 22 30 for by thee i have leaped over a wall by my god did you see i've run through a troop and by my god i've leaped over a wall you will leap this morning you're going to take a leap this morning if someone listen to what i'm saying you're going to take a leap this morning and that's what i'm showing you by the power of the holy spirit we can push back opposition we can push back resistance by the power of the spirit of god i mean literally push it back so everybody in the congregation you're going to pray now you see you don't wait until there is a resistance against you always live your life powered up enriched enriched first corinthians 1 5 he said they were enriched in all utterance enriched in every good thing power yourself up three minutes of serious vehement prayer lift your voice and pray pray in tongues resist that temptation resist it resist that temptation resist it resist it pray that hardship is a temptation push back push back push it back push it back pray in tongues push it back it will not reach the spirit in you it will not get to you it will not overwhelm you online on ground push back push it back push it back push it back cry out pray in the holy ghost stir up the power of the spirit inside of you stir up the power of the spirit inside of you push back i see those walls crumbling i see those walls falling by the power of the holy ghost by the power of the holy ghost by the power of the holy ghost go ahead two more minutes go ahead Yay, Galea, you will not break. Push back. That enemy will back down. That resistance will back down today. It will back down today. Bring that resistance to his knees. Bring that opposition to his knees. Break the power of that enemy. Push back by the power of the Holy Ghost. Push back. Kayano, Kayano, Kayano. Yendelemo, Shanamo, Kanamadoya. Rakiba Baba Salababaya. Elebono Sea, Elebono Sede. Elabono Seda. Elabono Sode. Yeda Baba Nade, Yetelno Sidadia. Embrada Kadia. Bradea. Ledero de Badea. Selabako Redea. 
Jandole bandolea. Le ndale bandelea. Se dico delico 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 delico. Delico 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 redea. Zoila, zoila, praeda, 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 praeda. Salamaya. Et de la gueule de la dégue la dégue la paliade. Push back. Panda sona yabale. Lade yabale. Online on ground. Zaba, 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 zaba. Yendele de de monde le baya. Yandole le monde de le baya. Yembrane le ndele de le baya. Jule. Jone. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear the word of the Lord. He said, He give the power to the faith. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. To him that has no might, he increases strength. Receive an increase of strength now. Receive an increase of strength now. And in the message translation, hear what how Paul puts it. He says, We've been surrounded and battered by troubles, but we are not demoralized. He said, we are not sure what to do, but we know that God knows what to do. He said, we've been spiritually terrorized. He said, but God hasn't left our side. He said, we've been thrown down, but we haven't broken. And you will not break. Hey, I say you will not break. Instead, you will get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger I told you the Holy Ghost takes a man past the breaking point and yet the man not break <laughs> because of his power because of his power and he is upon you you see one of the ways to take the spirit within and put it upon is what we've just done. Pray in the spirit. So never say, I can't take it. That's a lie. Not only can you take it, you are overcoming it already. Whatever is the challenge, as you leave this place now, you begin to gain the upper hand. I say you begin to gain the upper hand. I say you begin to gain the upper hand. You begin to gain the upper hand. And you will have testimonies over those issues in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said a very loud amen. You may stand up and go to your seats. Glory to God. Lift your hands, everybody. Give God thanks for his word this morning. Give him thanks. Open your mouth. Give him thanks. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. Lift your voice. I can't hear you. Give God thanks. We thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name.